All right, in this scene, we're going to talk about pyrimidine base production or de novo pyrimidine synthesis. And next, we're going to talk about purine synthesis. Okay, so this could be really tough, so let's try to make it a lot of fun. So here we have these three airplanes, and they're dropping these three things up here. They're dropping these three things, and these three things are going to be the precursors for de novo pyrimidine synthesis and de novo purine synthesis. Let's explain. So over here, this airplane in the middle is dropping rye bread. This rye bread over here, rye bread for ribose, ribose 5-phosphate. And you can remember that it's 5-phosphate because there are five different compartments to this bread. So this is the rye bread with the 5, ribose 5-phosphate. So ribose 5-phosphate is going to be a precursor for both pyrimidine synthesis and purine synthesis. The rye bread is going to fall down to the middle over here. You see it falls down over here, and it turns into this purple pie. Imagine rye bread turning into purple pie. Purple pie for PRPP. PRPP is necessary for both pyrimidine de novo synthesis and purine de novo synthesis. All right, now let's discuss each one of them. All right, so everything that's going on over here on this side of the screen is de novo pyrimidine synthesis. Soon we'll discuss purine synthesis as on this side of the screen. That's much easier. And we're going to remember that these are these two things because we have the pyramid over here. The pyramid is going, to, is going to be for pyrimidine, pyrimidine synthesis. And here we have this huge ring, this pure ring. I don't know why it's pure, but it's a ring. Pure ring for purine synthesis, okay? So again, but the PRPP, the purple pie, is relevant to both pyrimidine and purine synthesis. Okay, let's get right into pyrimidine synthesis. So here we have this airplane dropping this guy over here. This is actually a glue bottle that's mean. So here we have the glue that's mean. You see he's very mean, he's not nice, and he's glue. Glue mean for glutamine. And he's shooting out this carbon dioxide from him, from his dispenser. Carbon dioxide, glutamine and carbon dioxide are the precursors for pyrimidine synthesis. And you see he's got these two ATP batteries on top of him to help us remember that two ATP are also required. And these two ATP are going to be broken down to two ADP. So just to review, the precursor for pyrimidine synthesis is going to be the glue that's mean for glutamine, the carbon dioxide, and the two ATPs. Okay, let's go to the next step. So the glue that's mean goes ahead, and he's converted, you gotta imagine this in your head. If you imagine in your head, it will stick, I'm telling you. It's converted into this fossil car. It's a fossil car. Car for carbon oil and fossil for phosphate. Carbon oil phosphate. Glutamine is converted to carbon oil phosphate. Don't worry about the asparagus yet. I'll tell you what that is for. How is glutamine converted to carbon oil phosphate? How does it happen? Well, you can see it went through this sign over here, sign for synthetase, and shoe, there's a shoe on the side for two. Synthetase two, carbon oil phosphate synthetase two. That's how glutamine is converted to carbon oil phosphate. What happens to carbon oil phosphate now? Carbon oil phosphate combines with asparagus. You have to imagine this in your head. Imagine the car fossil combining with asparagus. Asparagus for aspartate. And the aspartate and the carbon oil phosphate come together and they produce an ore. An ore with acid dripping from it. The ore with acid, fluorotic acid. So again, let's review. We have the glutamine being converted to carbon oil phosphate, which is then converted through the addition of aspartate to this orotic acid, this ore with acid on it. You can imagine a leaf and a flute coming in and exploding here, trying to stop this conversion. To help us remember that the leaf flute or leflunamide inhibits this step. What happens next? It is where things start getting really fun. So we have the ore with the acid on it. And it combines, you have to really imagine this in your head. The ore with the acid and the purple pie come together. And they explode into a camel hump. It's not full camel, it's just the hump. Here's the hump. Hump for UMP. This is to help us remember the erotic acid combines with PRPP to make a UMP. UMP, hump for UMP. By the enzyme UMP synthase. Then we have the hump over here. The hump is converted into underpants. Hump to underpants help us remember that UMP is converted to UDP. And now two fates can happen. There are two things that can happen to the underpants. The underpants could be converted to dirty underpants for DUDP. And this is done by the enzyme ribonuclide reductase, represented by the rye bread on the red ox. Rye bread on red ox for ribonuclide side reductase. So I guess somehow this rye bread on the red ox made the underpants over here dirty. Or the underpants can be converted into a catapult. There's a catapult over here in the pyramid. Catapult for CTP. And the reason why it's in the pyramid and it's not going anywhere else is because that is the final product in that pathway. CTP. But DUDP can continue. What happens to the DUDP? 
So again, there was hump for UMP that was converted to UDP, and then we had the DUDP. And then DUDP can get converted into DUMP, dirty hump. That's why we have this dirty camel hump over here. And just to help us remember that hydroxyurea can inhibit this step, we'll have the hydrant urinating on this red ox over here. That was remember that hydroxyurea inhibits this step. Okay, so what happens to the camel hump? So the DUMP is then converted into DTMP. So here's the hump being converted into the dirty temple over here. Imagine a camel hump that's dirty being converted into a dirty temple. DTMP. Now this is the most complicated part of the entire de novo pyrimidine and purine synthesis. That it's not as simple as the camel hump, the dirty camel hump being converted into the dirty temple, but there's a whole process that has to happen for this to happen. And that's what's going on over here. Let's take a look. So when the dirty hump is converted into the dirty temple, what happens is that there's this leaning thief over here. This thief is leaning down, leaning, leaning for methylene THF. Methylene THF for leaning thief. And that's converted to a dirty hoof. That's why you have this dirty hoof over here for DHF. The DHF is converted to a regular thief, THF. Now there are two enzymes that we need to be aware of for this. So for the dirty hump to be converted to the dirty temple, we need a thyme leaf, a thyme leaf over here. Do remember? The thymidylate synthase. And for the dirty hoof to be converted into the thief, we need dihydrofolate reductase, represented by the two hydrants over here on top of the red ox. Two hydrants on red ox for dihydrofolate reductase. The MPTs over here exploding are to help us remember the three inhibitors of dihydrofolate reductase. M for MTX, T for TMP, and P for paramethamine. And the 5C over here exploding on the leaf is to help us remember the inhibitors of thy thymidylate synthase. 5 for 5-FU and C for cabocetamine. All right, that was it for pyrimidine synthesis. Now let's talk about purine synthesis. So as we said, ribose 5-phosphate was necessary for both de novo pyrimidine synthesis and purine synthesis. Let's talk about purine synthesis. So here we have the rye bread again being converted into the purple pie. As we mentioned, that was necessary for purine synthesis as well. So here we have the purple pie. And the purple pie, you have to imagine this in your head, the purple pie being converted into an imp. Just imagine purple pie being converted into an imp. This is ink imp, the little creepy guy. And it's converted for IMP. PRPP is converted to IMP in the first step of purine synthesis. There are actually a lot of steps for purple pie to be converted to IMP, but for the sake of the boards, we only needed to know this conversion of PRPP to IMP. If you want, you can imagine six mirrors coming in and inhibiting this step. Six mirrors to help us remember the six mirrors or the six mercaptopurine. And it's prodrug, azathioprine, which inhibit, inhibit purine synthesis in this step. Okay, what happens to the IMP, the IMP? So IMP can be converted either to AMP, represented by the guitar amp, or it could be converted to GMP. And for this, you can imagine the IMP turning into a GIMP. He's handicapped, a GIMP for GMP. And for this, imagine a microphone for mycophenolate inhibiting this step, as well as a rabbit for ribavirin. Okay, that's our scene on de novo pyrimidine and purine synthesis. I hope you enjoyed. Alrighty, take care.